correct. Because you know exactly that no, which one or another, the oxidation is still the same. Whether you swap the column or the, co the row, the oxidation is exactly the same. Right? But it's different for the risk stage. For the risk stage, it's totally different. Okay, let me take a look, pretend like this is a cohort study. If this is cohort study, so if I want to estimate the risk stage, uh, it is CS, right? Follow with the outcome and follow with a uh, symptom. T2. So if you swap the column and the row, the risk ratio is different, but the odds ratio is still not the same. So for the risk ratio, uh, whatever or however that, that they lay out the, the table. And it depends on the designer of that software. But you have to look carefully. For the risk ratio is the ratio of the two risks, right? So the risk of uh, having cases, having sites here in the exposure and having migration of them is about 0 0.73. Whereas it is about 0 0.51 in non-migration of them. So this range proportion divided by this, that is the risk ratio 1.4. Okay. So if the risk ratio, then you have to look carefully. Because we know well that the risk ratio is the ratio of the risks that started from exposure, not started from, uh, from the other. And for this ratio, that we are ninety-five percent confident that the odds ratio is vary from one point seven to four point two. That is statistically significant or not? Significant? How? How you make decision that it is significant? Not included one because. That the two odds, now if the two odds are equal, so that equal one, right? If the two odds are equal, so that it should cost to one. The ratio of the numerator and denominator are equal, so that close to one. So this further away from one, particularly for the lower limit, 1.7, so that it is now statistically speaking. So this is the way to report 95% confidence interval, the lower limit, comma, and the upper limit. Or you can use the, the lower limit, dash, and the upper limit. But use one, not mix that style of writing. It is the way for, but for your thesis, for your thesis, or our template, that we use comma, lower limit and upper limit, because now if, now, that is that the mean difference. The mean difference. So the mean difference can be minus, zero, and plus. And if you use dash, that is confusing. So we rather use common, lower, and upper. Okay, then that we move to, um, I talk all by this. And we estimate the risk ratio. If now we move to two by three, not two by two table, okay? Two by three table or three by two table. In case that another study factor here that are having more than two groups, 
for example, like BMI. So we are BMI that continuous data, but sometimes continuous data that you can categorize it according to the reference tissue. So go back to your data and please summarize. Uh, uh, use the same type. Same type. BMI. And then Sentai, I want to I want to categorize into three groups for BMI. Sometimes now when you want to categorize the variable for continuous to categorical variable, you can use the left lens length or threshold of that value. Okay. For example, BMI that you can use as a threshold according to the WH4 for Asian population or the Caucasian or African American population. Or sometimes the, the, the distribution, the, if you apply that the cutoff reference and the, it the doesn't work in your data. The so you have to the, try to categorize the according to the distribution of the data. The distribution of the data that you can look at third time Quartile time or queen time, but now try to do not categorize the variable into many groups. Now, if possible, three groups or four groups, then the maximum is now four groups. Because the more you categorize, then the more variables that you will have to include, even though that you consider only one variable, but when you fit the distribution, you have to create dummy values, okay? So if, now you have three categories, so that means you have two dummy values. So if you have four, you have three, right? So that not every one value in the equation, that now you need more number of subject and even than in that equation. Okay, summarize BMI please, and I, I want to categorize it to three groups. The first third time, 33 third time, and the second third time, 66 third time, approximately. We divide the data into three groups. And we want to look at uh, the first uh, threshold, the second threshold, and uh, then we apply that. So the first threshold is approximately about 20. Approximately, and the second is about uh, 23. And the last one is uh, higher than uh, 23, that is 23 point something. Okay? So, to make it easy to work on the data, if you list BMI in 1 over 5, This BMI in 105, and you can see that we storage BMI now with now five decimal point, and then now from calculation, from calculation that now BMI we collected the weight and height, and then we calculate now BMI. So right now to make it much easier, replace. We going to now get rid of now the decimal point. Replace BMI. <coughs> Equal round number BMI. Okay. And then you list the one over five, and then you can see that. Now BMI right now is the round number. Alright? So according to the same time, let me just hit command here. So we want to use this threshold lower than 20, that is the first quartile. 
and then uh, 20 Ohio to lower than uh, 23 and then the last one is 24 Ohio okay. um, you can use the gener uh, generate command uh, about 3 or 4, four commands but we want to use x type command x type BMI <coughs> Let me take a look at the command uh, There are two commands We call x type and PC type Okay
60 percent high, 80 and higher than 80 percent. Okay, let's template BMI GR3 or GR2. And tablet BMI GR. You see, it's a little bit different. And then 
uh, you need to display the percentage according to the column. So, for the patients uh, whose BMI is 31 or lower, right? Number one is 31 or lower. And number two is lower than 24. And this is higher than 24. So then you can see the proportion for the two for the two book are not much different. 57.8, 56.9. So lower than 24. 24 or lower. That the proportion of appendicitis are not much different compared to uh, 25 or higher. So that suggests you something that uh, if you want to keep not too many number of bathrooms, you can combine the data. You can combine the data of the two groups. And then uh, this exposed versus not exposed. So that's the benefit of exploring the data. Don't go directly to analyze history or distribution or things like that, not without looking at the distribution of the data. Or don't now try to think, oh, I want to categorize four or five group or six group without now looking at the result of the distribution. Because there's no point at all. Even though you want to categorize the four or five groups, but the risks are the same, like this time. The risks are the same. So you can combine them. You can combine them. 25 or higher compared to lower, which is quite meaningful. Because BMI 25 or higher is all in Asian population. Ask yourself if they are overweight in Asian population, <laughs> 25 or higher. So shall we report? Shall we combine? Shall we? <coughs> okay, let me drop. I want to use BMI DR. I generate BMI DR in BMI. Yeah, two. Right? Equal, equal, three. Or you can record one, two, equal zero, and three, equal one. But I generate new value called real idea. I just drop it, the previous one. Otherwise, you have to generate BMI TR3. Yeah. This way, this way you want to know. BMI TR3, or drop BMI, previous BMI TR. Drop, okay? Equal BMI TR2, equal, equal 3. Zero otherwise, that means 2 and 1 equal 0. Okay? Enter. So hopefully it's correct, right? EMI, ER. Yes, it's 93. 93. 1 to T plus 1 A2. That is 0. Right? Okay, let's try then. Take a look. Uh, before we go to combine, uh, let me show you the odds ratio. Uh, if you want to work on uh, the three groups and that we want to work on uh, the odds one and odds two and odds three okay odds one and odds two and odds three so that means that you have to compare that the odds of having the odds of having appendicitis 42 versus 21 that is the odds one 
Ox 2, 107, cross us 84. That is the Ox 2. And Ox 3, 92, was us 44. So the three Ox are different for the association. Uh, let's move to for this one. So that uh, the command that we can uh, use that is called the tap ox. The tap ox. So let's try. Alpha and BMI GR2. So the two ox ratio 
uh, using one as the reference. And you can see that uh, we should be able to compile two of them and compare to this one. Okay, let's <coughs> tablet okay, art AP and VMIGR. So right now that after we combine now the BMI the low the twenty or lower twenty four or lower together that is twenty four or lower compared to twenty five or higher. Right? Right now. And that the other ratio uh the other of the heavy the AP that is about one point three four was that not two point five seven. Or you can use tablet, just the general tablet command. AP, BMI, and then uh, you need the percentage by column. So 72% compared to 57%. 72% to 57%. That having the ethnic side is in obesity and normal BMI to lower BMI and we know that um, the higher BMI is uh, compared to lower BMI or compared to normal BMI that is more likely to have evidence than or inflammation the more inflammation than the normal BMI or normal BMI and now you can access the odds ratio as well on this one or on. So that the odds ratio is 1.9. 1 1.9. So the reference for the odds ratio is equal to 1. So you can see that the p value is significant 0 0.012. Compared to PBSD, 0 0.04. Right? So, now it's better to combine now once you see the signal or once that you can, uh, the distribution shows something and then you can reconsider to categorize uh, the variable, to categorize the variable and to, to make it more meaningful. Any question from here?
Okay, let's take a look uh, at your data. Tablet symptom. Symptom one. And AP. And uh, row and title. So according to the concept of uh, confounder, the confounder must associate with the outcome of interest, and the confounder must associate with the uh, factor of interest. Here is my gauge of right? So then the concept of confounder factor. So here that symptom, uh, the symptom five of progression of pain is also associated with uh, appendix arthritis. So the percentage is 66 versus uh, 34 approximately. Uh, no, 66 versus 30. Because I lay out uh, the percentage by uh, the percentage by row. So that the percentage by row that is 66 now of them who have progression of pain having uh, appendicitis compared to 33% of uh, patients now uh, who do not have progression of pain but they have appendicitis. So nearly double that uh, this progression of pain highly associated with appendicitis. Let's take a look if it is also common or associated with the migration of pain. So the symptom 5 and the symptom B2, right? Is it right? show you uh, about the patients now who have now who have a uh, symptom who have my who have migration who have migration those the patients who have migration uh, seven percent of them that are having the uh, patient is 92 of them that have a progression of pain. Now the patients who uh, do not have uh, migration of pain, only 78% of them have my progression of So it might be common, like if you have migration of pain, you may have more likely to have progression of pain. Yes. Okay. Something like this. So, uh, it's also highly association. But we don't know which one of those is. Because we don't now consider about you know, which one occurs first. Uh, so these two variables are associated together. And now the progression of pain also associates associate now with the other. So if we look at now the percentage, now try again that by sort symptom fun and then we tablet AP we tablet symptom and AP and then percent by row in our customer.
that the association are 75 compared to 57. That higher migration of pain in appendicitis than compared to no higher higher as appendicitis like in migration of pain compared to the non the, uh, compared to the appendicitis in non the migration of pain. And this is the same the same trend. That is the 25 of them uh, with the non-migration of them having appendicitis compared to 46 uh, 46 percent uh, of the uh, migration of pain that have uh, appendicitis in non-progression of the same trend so we want to know that whether the clothes and the adjusted constellation considering the location of pain as a uh, confidant factor after adjusting uh, after adjusting the, the percentage of the patients who have the location of pain whether migration of pain is still associated you know, with the appendicitis So the way that we can do, that uh, we can use uh, just the basic uh, analysis like uh, uh, like uh, stratify analysis. So that assess association between migration of pain compared uh, with the uh, appendicitis like in the non location and location of pain. That's only the basic analysis. Or you can uh, go to the uh, logistic Go to a logistication step. Right now, that uh, let's go to the simple one. So the simple one that is that uh, if that uh, we want to estimate that uh, the odds ratio, if we want to estimate the odds ratio uh, of uh, the symptom uh, migration of pain now uh, by now. Uh, Progression of pain or no progression of pain. So we go back to the basic command. CC, AP, and symptom T2, right? So that we estimate the oscillation of the symptom T. That is, now whether having migration or not having migration. Stratify stratified by symptom but certified by symptom but so you can see that as I mentioned at the beginning that we tablet now between symptom uh, migration of pain and AP by having vocation or not having vocation. So you can see that now the increment now between the two proportions. Okay, let's go back to So the increment or the difference 
at the same amount. So that now show you something that migration of pen might be the confounding or might be should be now should be the interaction of effect modifier because that the increment not or the difference not between rotation of pen or not having rotation of pen are quite similar. And that corresponds to what you estimate is the odds ratio here. The odds ratio is about 2.3 uh, and this is about 2.5. Not much different, right? Not much different. Compared to the crude odds ratio here, the crude odds ratio is 2.7. 2.7. So the cross ox ratio compared to the combined or uh, combined the two ox ratio is approximately 2.3. So combined the two ox ratio, that is now we estimate the ox ratio for the group one having migration or progression of pain and the ox ratio of not having progression of pain. And wait, now with the values. And that we call the average or mental hands of combined odds ratio. So mental hands of combined odds ratio that equal to 0.3 that is adjusted for the happy progression of pain. After adjusting progression of pain, uh, the heart, uh, the odds ratio equal to 0.3. But with adjusting equal to 0.6. Okay? So that the progression of pain is confounding, but not too not high effect of confounding. Because the cloth ox ratio is 2.7, whereas the adjusted is 2.3. It's a little bit lower. So what we need to do here that progression of pain now might be a confounding effect. Uh, with uh, uh, confining of it with a uh, migration of it. So the adjusted ox ratio equal to 0.3. So after adjusting progression of pain, that we test now for the mental hands of chi square here, that is still significant. So that means migration of pain is still significantly associated with the uh, appetite after adjusting the effect of location of pain. But, but what does it mean for this uh, homogeneity here? So homogeneity here is testing of ratio 1 equal of ratio 2. Of ratio 1 equal of ratio 2. Homogeneity here. So the of ratio 1 equal the of ratio 2. So what's the difference if it's not equal for the two oxidation? The OR1 equals the OR2. The OR1 is the oxidation of migration of pain effect on appendicitis in progression of pain. The yeah, special tool is that the effect of the migration of pain on appendicitis that in non vocation of pain. If the two are special artifacts, that is the effect modifier. Right? The effect modifier means that the effect of the Migration of pain is different according to progression of pain. Yes. Yes. So that means that what if a modifier? Now, when we test association between the factor of interest here is migration of pain. The effect of migration of pain on epidemics may be different according to the level of another one. Here is progression of pain. 
okay? But we see that the point estimation 2.3 versus 2.5. And then we you know straight away there should be the effect of modify or interaction. And we also test of homogeneity here. This is the basic of ox ratio. Now, when you work on another two variables, here is migration and the outcome of the cycle. Given stratified by another variable. Okay. Another variable having two groups here, that is vocation of pain and non vocation of pain. If the two are special, are not much different. That is we call homogeneity case. And that's when now you can ignore another value. But if it is different, when you fit the equation, you may have to think of fitting interaction to combine the two variables together. Because it's not fair if you're going to consider migration of pain independently, regardless the level of vocation of pain. If you know exactly that, the effect of the migration, whether it's high or low, depends on the vocation of pain. That's the meaning of interaction. If it is so, you have to fit the equation considering interaction to in the equation of participation. So the result of testing homogeneity here is the chi square equals 0 0.02 and the p value equals 0 0.8969. Very now, close to 1 because now the pi estimation is 2.3 versus 2.5. Right? So that corresponds to not what you estimated, the pi estimation. So, vocation of pain is a little bit confining effect on migration of pain, but it's not the non-effect modifier of migration of pain. That's the meaning. Any questions before I move forward? Uh, for the concept of interaction and confounding. <coughs> yes. Uh, if the place of homogeneity is significant, that means the uh, progression of pain is a uh, one of type of interaction, type uh, of um, mediator and modifiers, and how to, to make it. Okay. So if the two of special are different, example, we tell like the heavy formation of pain. Heavy formation of pain that the are special is four. And not having vocation of pain that two point five. So you can see very much four compared to two point five. Or even three compared to two point five. No, still not much three point five, let's say three point five compared to two point five. So the two are special are different. But at the end you have to test for the well. Statistically significant as well, and that means the effect of migration of pain is depend on the level of progression. And when you consider in the equation of logistic and for we fit not to assess that the main effect of each value, but we know exactly that migration of pain effect on epicycle depends on the level of vocation of So that means you have to work on interaction. Interaction of migration of pain and vocation of pain. Okay? So the way to work on interaction, 
very basic that you combine the two vibrations together. One one. One knot. Not one. Not knot. So instead of you have only two groups, you have four. That is the way to combine. That is the meaning of interaction. That's the meaning of interaction. So you combine the two wires together, and you construct a new wire. Construct a new wire instead of the only one. So the main effect. If you want to look at the main effect of NP, that is migration of K. So you have to look at one zero. If you want to look at the main effect of PP, you have to look at zero one. Right. Interaction is one one. It is very basic that you can do, or you can uh, use original variable that is migration now of pay the symptom three two that we just generated, and the symptom five, and there is a way to construct now without generate the new value in the log that I'm going to now talk in detail later. So the conclusion is that we can't ignore the interaction. If you know well after SS interaction that there is the interaction, at least the one pair of the values that we have considered. And then you have to fit the interaction. Because we want to not explain that the occurrences of epidemics as much as possible. The, the concept of uh, constructing risk prediction model is that make sure that important values are included. Make sure that uh, you consider in that in that equation in order to gain higher explaining of the values of uh, the outcome. That's the concept. Question? I can't move fast at all. I expect to finish everything about my dissertation. Yes, that will do. Yes? Ask me one question for the board. Yes. Definitely. Good question. Definitely. One factor can be that both. The epic modifier or confounding factor. So for this, if I pretend this is two, this is four, and this is two, quite fun. Okay? So that's the signal of interaction. And if the clone of special is 2.6, and the mental handle of special uh, came up with, uh, let's say, uh, 1.8. 1.8. So it is confounding effect and also effect modifying. It can be yes. What will it be that at the end that you have to fit it in the equation form? Particular, uh, particularly for interaction. Yes. But sometimes we ignore the interaction to, to make the model simple. Even though there is significant injection the effect on the outcome compared to the, the main effect. So the main effect that I consider two of them individually in the equation, in the same equation without injection. And then we fit the injection and then we compare the two equations. Fitting injection is the significantly expand epidemic size or not. If it's gain only a little bit compared to the the risk, no, not the risk, the benefit now of explaining.
because we want to use this equation now in clinical practice. So we, we want to make it more simple. So we rather uh, ignore the interaction. But that's me you already check the interaction, but the interaction can only lead to in the in a minute. Okay, and 
Okay. Yeah, and the concept of fitting equation, what are type of equation? Right? You are familiar with the linear equation, right? You already learned about linear equation, right? So the linear equation that the outcome is put in as well. The concept of the equations are the same, what are type? So you consider the main effect here. So the main effect here uh, is multiplication. So I skip a little bit, but if you know later what I mean here, AP plus R not AP. Pretend like this is continuous R. Okay? And beta not, beta not plus B1 symptom. Okay, AP. And plus B2. So you have to fit the main effect first, and then pass V3 MP multiplied by PP. You can't ignore the main and add the intention in the equation. You can't. That's the concept. But if now you add the variable that I said that the way another way at the beginning I said that we you generate the new variable containing four. Okay? You can ignore. It's different. Because if you generate a new variable contain four, one variable contain all information of the two variables. So you consider only one value. But one variable here you have to construct W value. Mm -hmm. Right? One MP, one PP, and one one compared to zero zero. So the same. So we will talk more on Thursday. And we have to finish <laughs> But before we finish today, question please. Question? No question. Yes. At the formal class, as you uh, showed an, an example about association, I'm wondering about the causal association. Maybe you can use uh, the the relation to the factor association for okay. So that you want to play as cost association. Yes. You have to go back to the study design for the cost of association. So the rule of or the criteria of cost of association. What's the criteria of cost of association? Yes, what else? Biological possibility or mechanism that can explain the cause of what else? Consistency? What else? The manager. The manager. Right? So about six or seven are criteria that the criteria of cause of association according to the study. But more advanced, later on more advanced, combined with a uh, few types of study design and using statistical modeling, and that can claim cause of association. But it's too early for you right now. Right now that you hook with another criteria according to uh, epidemiological study. Okay. And then later on, if we have got time, uh, we will probably uh, we will probably start talking about the treatment effect of all the The treatment effect of all In data, they use PE. So that is another type of uh, claiming causal association uh, without using randomized control.